Has this ever happened to you? You go to use your high capacity, high output drill battery only to find that, oh look, it's only got one bar. Oh well, I'll just go put it on the charger. You put it on the charger, it's not charging. It says that it's fully charged, but it's not fully charged. And when you put it in a tool, it just doesn't even work. Now at that point, you have three options. For one, you throw it out. A lot of people do that, unfortunately. For two, you try to go to the store and get it replaced, which sometimes that's easy, sometimes it's not so easy. Or three, take it apart, try to salvage it yourself. And that's what I'm gonna be doing today. Now before I go any further, I just wanna make two things clear. Uh, working with big lithium ion battery banks like this can be dangerous. Don't do it at all, but also don't do it if you're not comfortable with it. You're much better off just getting this replaced properly if you, know, you have the ability to. And two, if you decide to take on this, make sure you're safe. I'm not responsible for anything that happens because while these things can put out a ton of energy really quickly, the individual cells are you know, four volts at most. So generally you're not looking at electrocution as a problem, but if you've ever seen what happens to lithium ion when things go bad, uh, this can very easily cause a house fire and that's your biggest issue. And so be careful, obviously. Don't try this at home officially. But you know, you're probably not watching this video just for entertainment. I'm not that entertaining. Now the main things you're gonna need, obviously, is the battery itself, but also a benchtop power supply like this one. Now not all benchtop power supplies are able to charge lithium ion. You need to be able to do constant current, constant voltage charging. So if you have a like an 18650 or a 21700 charger, that'd be a better option because then that kind of takes a little bit of the risk out of it. Whereas doing it this way, you very easily can mess it up if you're not careful. So when this battery was giving me trouble, as of right now, it's got one light on the indicator. It actually only had one blinking light when I first took on this. I actually did a little bit of cell testing yesterday and charged up one of the cells. It was blinking, which means it's dead, you know, deader than dead. And I put it on the charger and it just wouldn't take a charge. It would say, hey, it's fully charged, sorry. When I went and actually probed the positive and negative pins on here, I was getting about 22 and a half volts which nominally this should be getting about 24. It's probably not gonna end up being exactly 24, but 22 and a half is still kind of within where it should be if you're losing charge, but not completely dead. Now, I don't know exactly how the battery management system in this thing works and how it's properly balancing, if it's properly balancing things, but either way, it knows and it can tell the charger that something's wrong, there's probably a cell that's imbalanced. And that's the biggest thing that you're gonna see when you have a battery like this that's not taking a charge, seemingly still should be working. Probably one of the cells in here is bad. I guess to start off, you take the screws out. Luckily these cobalts are pretty easy. There's just four screws. You take them out and the whole thing just kind of comes apart, which is pretty cool. If you look at this, it's actually just six of these um, INR 21700 battery cells. Now this battery is a four amp hour. That means that these are probably four amp hour individual cells and they're nominally four volts. So four times six, 24 volt, four amp hour. Eh? Crazy how that works. I can't see the entire model number on this battery on here. It's kind of covered up, but I've basically determined that these are INR 21740s, 40T, which is a 4,000 amp hour version of it. And with that, you can look up the spec sheets of these to kind of get an idea as to what things should be and what they charge at. And so as you can see here, this layout for this battery is obviously these are gonna be your, basically your positive and negative for the whole cell. So if you were to pin here and here, you're gonna get 24 volt or somewhere near there. And then between this to here, this to here, this to here, this to here, is to here and so on, you're gonna be getting the individual battery cells within it. So if you were to take a multimeter, for example, and probe each combination, you're gonna get a certain voltage. And that's exactly what I did here. So this point right here is the same as this point right here. And then this up here is this up here and so on. All of these points in here are the various points on this battery. And measuring the voltage between these points will give you the individual cell voltages. Now, ideally, this battery mo control module on here is able to individually charge each of the batteries in here and you know balance everything. Why it falls out of balance, I don't know. Maybe this thing sucks. Maybe these batteries suck, I don't know. So I know that uh, this third one, you have the first battery, second battery, third battery. This third battery should be 
like 3.4 volts or so, probe these two parts. And we're at 3.47, 3.48 volts. Pretty much all the other cells are about four volts. The fact that this one is three and a half is not good. That means it's out of balance. Up until yesterday, this battery right here, which now says 4.15, this was actually at 3.2, so this one was the lowest one yesterday, but I actually had uh, charged it last night just to make sure that it's not completely dead. With all that, I went through and probed each combination of battery and was able to get these voltages. So we got 3.9, 4.0, 4.0, and then this 3.8. Those four are pretty much, you know, they're close enough to be able to make this battery continue to work. But these two right here, the 3.2 and 3.4, that's not good. These are way out of whack and that's, basically causing the issues that we're having. More than likely you put this thing on the charger and the battery control module sees, oh, well, we got cells that are at four volts. We don't need to charge those anymore. But yet the whole pack voltage is less than 24 by quite a bit. That's a problem. Battery's borked, oh well. But of course, with the right tools and power supply, you can individually charge these cells and uh, you know bring it back to life. So that's what I'm gonna do today. One thing to note is that because these are wired how they are, the positive and negatives kind of are you know, going in this direction. So you have positive over here, positive over here, and so on. And so that's something you gotta keep an eye on um, to make sure that if you're gonna hook up a power supply to these batteries, you're not reversing the polarity and exploding everything, because that's not good. So these battery cells are the 21700s, which are essentially bigger versions of an 18650, if I'm not mistaken. They run at the same voltage, the nominal voltage of 4.2 volts and the specs on these say to run it at 0.5C. So what that means is that in order to charge a battery, one of these cells properly, you'll wanna charge it at 4.2 volts at an amperage of half of its capacity. So these are four amp hour, so 4,000 milliamps. You'll wanna run it at 2,000 milliamps, which is two amps. So we flip on this power supply right here. So you can see now I actually have this at 4.2 volts. And then our current, we have it at two amps right now. So that means that it is going to try to force two amps into it at 4.2 volts. So when you're charging a lithium ion battery like this, using this method, it's gonna run a constant current and then constant voltage method. So what that means is when I put voltage to this battery, you're gonna see the voltage on this drop down to pretty much whatever the battery voltage is at this moment. So if it's 3.5, it's gonna drop down to about 3.5 volts. But the current is gonna be at two amps and that current is gonna sit at two amps because that's the max that we put in here and slowly the voltage of the battery is going to rise until it hits 4.2 volts. Once it hits there, it switches to constant voltage. It'll stay at 4.2 volts and the current is going to slowly lower and lower and lower until it's essentially fully charged which is gonna be you know, sub uh, 100 milliamps, somewhere in there. And that's how you know that the battery's fully charged. So once you have everything set, I mean, the, really the biggest thing is just to plug it in and see what happens. I know that this pin right here is going to be the positive, and this pin right here is going to be the negative for this battery that I'm trying to charge. So because I wanna make sure 100%, 1000% that uh, I'm putting the right polarity onto the part of the battery, I'm gonna probe this right here and probe this right here, and we have 3.48 volts, and it's positive, not negative. If I were to have it switched around, you're gonna see that the reading is a negative reading. You know, if I were to put the negative over here, positive over there, you're negative feeding the battery. Best case scenario, the battery breaks. <laughs> Worst case scenario, everything explodes. And we don't want that. And that's why I recommend having a diagram of some sort so you can really keep track of what everything is. Let me do negative first on this one right here. Now, as soon as I hit kick this on, the uh, fan and this uh, power supply is gonna kick on, so it's gonna get a little loud, but we'll see what happens. I'm gonna put positive right here. So now, as you can see, power supply has gone down to 3.6 volts, but it's running at a constant current of two amps. Now, technically, if you had a, a fast charger for a battery like this, maybe the official cobalt one, might run it at four amps, which is a, a 1C setup. And I think the max that you can do one of these at is 1.5, which would be running it at six amps. The higher amperage that you run it at kind of lessens the battery life overall. You know, you're fast charging it, gets it, full really quick, but it also, you know, is not really great for the battery long term. So running it at two amps is gonna be kind of the standard charge and that's what I want it to uh, run at. So as you can see, if you slowly watch this, the voltage of it is gonna slowly keep rising up. You know, let's see it go to five and it's gonna keep going up until it reaches that 4.2 volts and then it'll switch over to constant voltage, which now the amps will begin to fall. 
When I did the other battery yesterday, it took about two hours or so for it to get down to an amperage like that was almost zero. And at that point, the battery was fully charged. I guess at this point, you're just gonna sit and wait. So uh, I'll try to come back whenever this is ready to go. All right, so I did look it up, and according to the spec sheet, at this charging rate that we're using, we want to turn off the charging at about 200 milliamps. And one thing you'll see is it is lowering pretty quickly. And that highlights one important thing you want to remember if you're going to charge it with a power supply like this. You want to turn off the charging at a certain point in the process. You want to turn it off when you get to, in this case, roughly 200 milliamps. If you were charging faster, it might be lower. Different batteries and different configurations are gonna have different settings. Point being is, if you're using one of these, it's not gonna turn it off when it gets to that point. You have to be there and paying attention to actually disconnect it from the power supply when you get to that point. That's why if you have an actual charger that's dedicated to charging these batteries, usually they're gonna have a setting to where they can turn off the charging automatically. If you threw this battery onto the real cobalt charger, that's what it does. Doing it this way, everything's manual, so you need to be fully aware that you gotta be paying attention to this and pull it off. Otherwise, if you let it go too low, you're technically overcharging the battery. You get a little bit of a leeway, but at a point it may become dangerous. You might overcharge it and actually cause the battery to explode or something crazy. Now you're out of balance in the other direction and that's even worse. You definitely don't wanna leave these charging overnight, like turn it on and then go somewhere or something like that. You definitely don't wanna do that because if you come back and all of a sudden it's slam full of charge that's not good for it so definitely keep an eye on it and pull it off when you're supposed to if you look right now i don't know if you'll be able to see it but i actually have four lights on the uh, on the battery so um, basically it's fully charged even in this uh, state with one of them probably being still being a little bit undercharged pretty much back to the way it's supposed to be which is awesome that's one less uh, trip to lows i have to make one less you know fighting over getting a replacement and one less battery that's in the landfill because honestly they're not sending these back to Cobalt and getting them rebuilt. They're just throwing them away and writing it off and everything, so. All right, we're good. Now, you don't have to pull it off right at 200 milliamps, but as long as you're in the ballpark, you know, it's gonna be okay. So I am gonna put it on a couple of these other cells just to make sure they're all kind of in the same uh, balance and uh, I'll get back with y'all when this thing is ready to be put back together. All right. So after a couple hours of balancing, um, I went through and balanced all the batteries. So now every cell in here is at 4.15 volts. So pretty much should be good to go. I'm gonna throw this thing back in the case and we'll, uh, we'll see if it still works. I mean, it should still work now. Look at that, we got four lights. Remember this thing was not working just uh, yesterday, so. In case you were wondering, at least in the case of this battery, it requires a uh, T10, but it's a security T10 Torx. It's got the little nub in the middle. They make it a little bit difficult to uh, take these apart, but not, not too bad. At least these are not, you know, sealed with glue at the joints like some of them used to be. Those were awful. All right, battery back together. We got four lights. Let's put her in something uses a bit of power. Angle grinder. All right, looks like she works. So I have seen quite a few posts online about these uh, Cobalt Ultimate Output batteries specifically about them having issues like this where people can only charge them to one, two, or three bars and having to take them apart and rebalance the batteries. It's weird that I've not really had any issues with these Cobalt batteries with the regular ones like the extended runs or even the, the regular ones. I don't, I don't really have any issues with them. Um, but yeah, these uh, Ultimate Output ones for some reason just have problems, but you can use a process like this and uh, get a working battery again because, you know, there was nothing really wrong with it. It just was, it just lost who it was for a little bit and uh, a little shock or two of the power supply got it all going. So hopefully you found this video informative if you uh, were having the same problems as me. If you did, give this video a like, that helps me a lot. And, uh, you know, you could subscribe if you want to. You know, I got plenty of stuff going on on this channel sometimes occasionally. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, feel free to put them into the uh, into the comments down below. And I'm, I'm pretty responsive when it comes to stuff like that. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. And until the next one, 
I'll see y'all later.